Thanks for staying with us. It's still Ivan Daybreak, and I'm now being joined by Omobalanli Adeshui to review the paper. And we also have Matthew Oluku, a public affairs analyst, here with us to also discuss some of the stories um, that you just read from the paper. Good morning. Hello, Samson. How are you today? I'm all right. Good morning, sir. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure having you. Good yes. Morning. So l let's look at, you know, the U.S. terror a lot. Um, th that was um, an information on Intel that was shared um, about yesterday or two days ago. And mm -hmm. the response has um, definitely been alarming. You know, on the side of the masses, um, the, the fears have been stoked about, you know, a possible attack on the capital. On the other hand, you have the security agencies, especially the DSS, saying, oh, there's no cause for alarm. It's nothing to worry about, you know, while, while in charge. Um, looking at, in, you know, the recent events in recent times, talking about the attack on the Nigerian law school in Abuja, the Kuba um, Axis, where you had an attack on, you know, um, the, the um, military, you know, um, guards that were guarding the presidential villa and all of that. Do you think that the security agencies are taking this U.S. terror a lot seriously? Mm, once more, thank you for having me. Yeah. I think we have not developed the capacity to police this nation. Okay. Put together the police, the army, the DSS, we don't have the capacity. It's unfortunate. Because you have a situation where, like you just said, recently mm -hmm. we had the Presidential Guard Brigade attacked. Yes. Right yes. there in the mm -hmm. capital, yeah. Presidential advance team was attacked in Katsina State. Mm -hmm. So I think what we should do as a people is, hence U.S. is giving this alert, we should avail ourselves the privilege of getting the information to be cautious. Because they are warning their citizens where not to go. And they are watching the situation. So the defense are telling us that we should remain calm, that they are on top of the situation, I doubt. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that they are on top of the situation. Because we have had instances in the past where security arrangements have been compromised, mm -hmm. lives have, have, have been lost. All we hear is reactionary approach. Okay. We seldom see proactiveness on the part of federal government through the respective security agencies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I say it's quite unfortunate. But since the situation we find ourselves, what we do is we avail ourselves of this privilege of getting this information and plan our activities ensure that those areas that are vulnerable to be attacked okay if we have any loved one in abuja even in lagos here <coughs> we ensure that we avoid those areas but I this that isn't is the, the first time this kind of alert will be coming to nigeria especially to their own citizens mm -hmm. Who are in Nigeria? They tell them don't go to the northern part of the country because there are, you know, banditry issues, kidnappings, and all of that. This isn't the first time. What's different about this particular terror alert? I think the difference is the timing, because we are in an electionary campaign mm. period. And again, if you look at in the past, even up to there will have never been any time Nigeria had the capacity to police this nation. Okay. I could remember in some time really? two years there ago. Yes, of course. Time. Yes, Even of course. During the yes, of course. Colonial era. Look at how long it took Nigerians who were kidnapped on their way from Abuja to Kaduna. A journey of less than four hours mm. took them six months to get to their destination. I have a situation where sometime in two years or three years ago, where a 27 years old American Philly Wanton was mm -hmm. kidnapped in the Nigerian Republic, yeah. taken to Sokoto so, State. Exactly. American security agencies came mm -hmm. to rescue him alive. Just one person. And, yes. You know, they, they have the capacity. Used all their forces. I mean, it comes to intelligence gathering. I could remember one time Nigerian Air Force bombed, mm -hmm. mistakenly, yes. bombed IDB camp. Mm. And they said they were relying on intelligence given to them by their foreign partner. What I'm trying to say, in essence, is if we had the capacity, the independence, to gather our own information that is actionable, that will pay off. We will be relying on our foreign partner that will give us information at the end of the day, look at the collateral damage. But you know quite well, again, that when it comes to national security, you do not depend on, you know, um, your own intel um, alone. You, you also have to work with allies and partners. I'm to, not to be saying able to Nigerian work. government should not part, um, share information. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, as an independent state that Nigeria is, yes. unfortunately, we do not have the capacity. Okay. to manage our security here. Even as advanced as Ukraine, 
if not for the help they are getting from the America, West. Britain, mm -hmm. Germany, name it, perhaps by now, Russia would have overrun their capital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's say the Nigeria that have not, are not trying to play down on, are not trying to despise Nigeria. That is not what I mean. Mm. Okay. I'm only saying it the way it is. Okay, okay so, so you're saying okay. that the uh, military are trying to douse the tension by telling Nigerians that there's no need to panic. What else would you have suggested that they do in this kind of situation? What I think they should do is one, acknowledge that America have what it takes to get actionable intelligence. Mm. Okay. Having done that, advise Nigerians to avoid gathering in such places. And if it is possible, if it's not necessary that you embark on a journey, stay away from such places. Then they should equally tell us that they are equally, equally partnering with these foreign partners to forestall any likely attack. Mm. Because whether we like it or not, we are not independent in terms of fighting insurgency. Look at the 12 Tucano jet we are using mm. currently. If not for America, we, can, we wouldn't get it. And for me, it's like a game changer. But are we even using them effectively? Because uh, it's another thing question. to say whether we are using them effectively. It's another thing to say whether it has been deployed. Hmm. Because I quite understand that. What I'm saying is, do we have trained manpower, skilled men who can, you know, use it effectively to tackle the I think the so. I think so. Because Part because they the, talked about training when they brought in the Tucano jets. Before you even start the production, you need to send Nigerians there. They will undergo the process throughout the production to delivery. Mm -hmm. So, uh, by the, as, at, as at the time you take delivery of it, Nigerians are the ones flying it. Mm -hmm. But the issue is, I think there are some lacuna, there are some restraint. Because the contractor agreement forbid them from using it in certain areas. Mm -hmm. But that notwithstanding, what I'm trying to say in essence is we are not independent when it comes to fighting crime at that level. But, but again, uh, still talking about you know, this issue of deployment of Tukana and the rest of them, the federal government about two years now has gazetted you know, banditry as terrorism. So I understand quite well you do not use instruments of war you know, within civilian um, um, settlements. But if banditry is um, rampant in the northwest, which you have um, the, um, your Zamfara, Kaduna, Sokoto, and likes of them, then the federal government, uh, according to that you know, um, gazette, is you know, lawful to uh, engage the use of Tucano in the northwestern region of the nation. Even as I agree with you, the federal government have adequately mm -hmm. gazetted and designated uh, some hitato known as some groups hitato known as bandits, bandits as yes. terrorists, mm -hmm. like the Asaru and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But you agree with me that the federal government tarried so long, they wasted so much time. Yes, I don't know why it took them so much time to agree to accept to designate. Um, bandits, bandits, bandits as terrorists. As terrorists. Yes. Because if you look at the, the activities, mm. by all purpose, is terrorist in nature. And look at when they uh, designate IPOB as terrorists. Mm. It's like with the speed of light. But you know they talked about mm. some criteria when it comes to you know designating them as terrorists, talking about the fact that they don't have organized... Uh, What's it called now? Organized crime. They're not organized in perpetrating their crimes. For instance, terrorists, they have names, mm -hmm. and you know how they operate, where they operate, and the kind of demands they make. But this bandit, as at the time before they were gazetted as terrorists, the federal government came out to say, we cannot tag those people as terrorists yep. because they do not have an organized way of operating. Mm -hmm. We don't even know where they are. We don't know, you know what kind of, uh, what their demands are. I think government was playing politics. Mm, that's what a lot of people mm -hmm. said. Government was because it's simple. Because I have a situation where, like I mentioned, Asaru, okay. um, terrorist organization now. I have a situation where even the Cardinal State gov government mm -hmm. have come out to say that, if, of course, they wrote a the Cardinal State government wrote a memo to federal government okay. telling federal government that terrorists or bandits, as they used to call them, have already formed a parallel government in Cardinal State. Mm -hmm. To the point of Adjudicating over cases. There's even a case where, according to them, somebody who sold someone's ex land was fined about a million naira. Mm. In Zamfara, yeah. a terrorist group, formerly known as Bandits, gave ultimatum to the state government that they should pay them about 30 million naira mm. as they killed about 300 
Nigerians who are in that state. Mm. So what I'm trying to say in a sense is you cannot hoodwink Nigerians into believing that their mode of op operation is difficult to decipher. Mm. That is the reason you tarry so long mm. in designating them as terrorists. I don't I don't want to accept that. Okay. Look at some time in in Benue State. You saw a an attack on the existing governor. Mm -hmm. And a group came out to say we are full any nationality movement. Mm, they yes. claim responsibility. How formidable could a, a group be? Mm. Okay. And whether we like it or not, it's on record that Fulani are fought with terror, dangerous terrorist organizations in the world. Well, we, we also terrorists. do not want to be stereotypical. Okay. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, I'm talking, saying based on available record globally. If you had said okay. maybe the... No, I said globally. Fulani are rated as fourth most dangerous terrorist organization in the world, going by global terrorism deaths. Fulani is okay. It's not tribe. a Nigerian thing. When you say Fulani, Fulani is a tribe. I agree with you. So so you say that Fulanis are designated as the fourth most, most dangerous, dangerous terrorist organization in the world. It, it, uh, you, may say that, you may say that there are some Fulani who are now criminals. Mm -hmm. I don't dispute that. But I'm saying that going by um, global terrorism deaths, Okay, let, let, let's. I'm not saying from my own understanding. I understand where okay. you're coming from. Let, let, let's bring this back on track. Um, talking about the, this terror alert now, there, there are now concerns, you know, within some quarters that there's the possibility that the campaign, you know, um, the campaign season will be um, truncated as a result of that. Um, you talked about earlier that the, probably the, you know, DSS or the military should prevent people from gathering at certain, you know, places and what have you. If that happens, don't do you think that the 2023 polls w would have question marks on it in terms of um, it taking place? You see, people have to be alive before they can vote. Okay. Mm -hmm. God forbid, if there is a bomb blast in a campaign rally, whether you like it or not, people will disperse. So it is better if it is preventable. Okay. I'm not saying the respective political parties should not go ahead with their campaign. But if there is need to exercise or restrain, I don't think it's out of place. Okay. All right, we'll just leave it there. Let's take a break or we'll come back. We will be delving into the topical issue for the day. Please stay with us.